Hello! A lot of you have asked me how I make flames for my Lidu Demnatora miniatures, so in this video I'm gonna try to show you. First of all, you need to secure the green stuff properly to the miniature. I use my fingers to do this firstly, and then I use this metal tool that looks more or less like a toothpick to secure the green stuff in place. By doing so, I also get these nice indents that are great bases for starting the flames. Once the green stuff is secure, I then use the tool to pull out strands of it to make these the tips of the flames. Then a big secret to how I make my flames is to use the tool to stab into the green stuff that gives us these nice rounded indents that emulate the wavy shapes of flames. You can see me doing it here for instance. And then it's all a matter of going back and forth, uh, pulling and pushing and stabbing the green stuff until you get these wavy shapes that form uh, the flames. And as uh, I will go around here and show you. Here uh, I had a, uh, the, the green stuff broke a little bit and this is something that you don't necessarily want because the, these flames or these strands, uh, the very tips of them won't be pointy necessarily and this is something that you want to avoid however by pushing the green stuff back you can go back over it and refine it further with the tool and once you feel done with your shapes here uh, that is sort of the uh, what you want it to look like here uh, moving on to the pauldron you can see that i've done a little bit more of the mini but it's just to show you uh, in another location of the mini how i do it and once more, the first step is to make sure that the green stuff is secure in place by stabbing and, and pushing the green stuff onto the model. Um, it's always good to start with pretty fresh green stuff because uh, the more it dries or, or hardens, the more difficult it will be to make it stick to the model. And that is very important in order to be able to pull uh, out the strands and uh, also push it into place. So here I managed to make it fit to the model and now I'm pulling it out, I'm pushing in order to create these wavy patterns. Um, and uh, you don't need to do much in places, it depends on the granularity of your flames that you want. If you want more of a Games Workshop uh, feel to it. You don't want to do too many of these uh, different uh, peaks and, and uh, details. Uh, but if you want to go for a more realistic flame, uh, which I'm trying to do here, then you want to do many of these little uh, indents and, and so on. Once you've uh, managed to go over the model everywhere, you should end up with something that looks like this. And each of these uh, little bits of flame all over the model have been created in the same way by first uh, fixing the green stuff onto the model and then pushing, pulling and stabbing the green stuff. Next, to paint it, uh, I always prime my models in black, which means that uh, to get that nice fiery brightness, uh, I work in layers, starting with Mephiston Red, which is a good uh, base color. Uh, to cover all the black and to get a good nice base coat and move on from there. After I've completely uh, covered the flames with Mephiston Red, I go over it with Evil Sun Scarlet, uh, mostly sticking to the bottom of the flames, not necessarily all the way up to the tips, because we want the tips to be a little bit darker since the point here is to paint the flames more or less like the paint emoji. Um, and this is something that I found that if you uh, paint it this way, you get some nice fiery brightness. And notice here also that I'm uh, painting a little bit on the base here to get an OSL effect. Here I'm moving on to orange, Troll Slave Orange in this case, and once more sticking to the bottom of the flames. Uh, since we're going for this uh, emoji style, keeping the tips of the flames uh, red um, just to get this nice transition. And this is a great paint to work with and you might notice here also that I'm working with an old brush and that is because uh, these flames they are really um, they can really damage your brushes so in these early stages where we're just blocking in flames I recommend using not your best brush. 
here and after adding some orange uh, blocking it in I've now moved on to a better brush to do my more fine detail and what I'm trying to do here is to blend the orange and the red together uh, moving from up to down uh, because I want to have the lower parts of the flames more saturated. I'm also trying to put the most of the orange inside the little crevices of the flames because they them being more in the center of the flame should in theory be hotter and therefore it makes sense that they are brighter. Now after adding the orange I'm moving on to a mixture of orange and yellow uh, once more keeping it uh, within the area of orange um, to make us uh, smaller and smaller areas of brighter and brighter flame and keep in mind that the more yellow you go the hotter the flame is and here it's sort of up to you to decide how hot you want to go uh, however an important part here is to once more keep the flame emoji in mind and then uh, therefore focus your um, yellows further towards the bottom of the flames and also inside the crevices of the flames here I noticed an area where I transition a little bit too quickly between uh, um, yellow and, and red so therefore I went back here with orange and in a attempt to blend the two together and simply what you do is that you grab some of your uh, troll slayer orange or your orange color and you paint in the area in between the yellow and red if you make a transition that is too quick between yellow and red you will make the flame will look a little bit unnatural because flames are always transitioning from uh, white to yellow to orange to red so it doesn't matter how much the orange you have between the yellow and the red but you need to have some orange in between there and uh, it's just a matter of keeping the, the paint a little bit thinner which is good with troll flayers since it doesn't provide the best uh, coverage and then just going over the red areas and trying to blend the two colors together Next, uh, I'm moving on to brighten things up even further, and this is then with U Uriel Yellow, uh, putting it on at the bottom of the flames here. Once more, thinking about the flame emoji, keeping my uh, yellows to the, to the bottom, and in some select places in, in uh, side crevices, and in areas where I want the flame to be hotter. Uh, flames also move upwards uh, as they expand and therefore you get these areas that are a little bit patchy yellow at the uh, further up as well. Next to bring out the heat even more I use phalanx yellow uh, and this I use very sparsely uh, because you, it's very easy here to go too far and get more of these two quick transitions between yellow and red uh, so here uh, you might be uh, wanna have to go back with orange again even uh, to uh, darken down that yellow just a little bit to get these nice transitions from yellow to uh, orange to red. Then the final step here is that I've mixed my phalanx yellow together with some white uh, just to give that a little extra pop because since fire is basically light uh, light is well bright <laughs> and you want that to really shine through so you want to do this step however you want to be very sparse with this because it's, it can otherwise desaturate your flames and uh, you get this very pale impression and once you're done with this well then your flames are done thank you for watching